Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today we're doing something a little bit different, which kind of feels like I say that in every single video, but you do! Trust me on this one, it's gonna be worth it. So we actually took to Twitter a couple of days before filming this video to ask what kind of everyone thinks about us doing kind of news segments, a little bit of a rant, a little bit of a praise where necessary, and sort of just talking through the week's latest news. So let's kick it off with AMD. So as we know, AMD haven't really released anything new on the graphics card front, well, for quite some time, and it's getting a little bit frustrating. I think everyone's now sick of having a refresh of a refresh of a refresh of a refresh. When's it gonna end? Obviously there's talk of Navi coming out, seven nanometer, it's gonna blow everything out of the water. But, well, where is it? That's the problem that we've got. It's just not here and no one actually knows when it's gonna be here. Yes, there was talk of uh, Computex this year that, you know, there was gonna be something, just something small to sort of, you know, wet the appetite, but nothing materialized. Now there's talk of obviously CES, but even then, I don't think there's really gonna be anything there. Obviously we had the release of the RX 590, and with that, we kind of got, a, I guess, a refresh of a refresh of a refresh. So, but it did sort of, you know, incorporate new uh, technology in terms of at least the fabrication process. So we went down from 14 nanometer, like we have with the RX Vega 56 and 64, to 12 nanometer. But it's still not quite that seven nanometer that everyone's hoping for. We want better, thermal dynamics, we want better cooling, we want more efficiency. And that's what Navi and seven nanometers is going to give us. But what we've actually found recently is that a trademark logo has been, well, uh, essentially filed in the uh, system in the US. Now it looks very, very similar to the kind of initial uh, logo that AMD had, but a Twitter user named by uh, M Bombi has actually discovered the trademark logo, which is ever so slightly different. So it actually looks like the Vega logo, but it has sort of two lines down it that kind of, I don't know, gives us that inkling that it's Vega 2. So, I mean, does that mean that seven nanometer is gonna come around a lot quicker than what we expect? Or is it just gonna be, you know, maybe giving the RX Vega 56 and 64 the kind of 12 nanometer treatment? It'd be interesting to sort of see, you know, what happens with that. Either way, that was actually filed in the end of November, 2018. So maybe we will see something at CES, but if it's, kind of, you know, looking at it from face value. Honestly, I think it's gonna be Vega 56, Vega 64, and it's just gonna be 12 nanometer. Yes, sorry guys, a refresh of a refresh of a refresh of a, of a refresh? How many times can AMD do refreshes? Come on, sort it out, we want Navi. Let us know in the comments section what you're, I don't know, expecting from CES. Is it gonna be Navi or is it just gonna be a refresh? So sticking with CES, because we typically know that products are obviously launched at CES and Computex, and then sometimes uh, a little bit in between. But there's been a lot of leaks going around recently about the RTX 2060. So obviously we have 2070, we have 2080, and we have 2080 Ti. But where's the 2060 at? So from what I can kind of deduce from this and the news that we've actually posted on eTechnics.com is that there has been a leak of the Gigabyte RTX 2060. Uh, nothing about sort of, you know, key sort of specs at the moment. We know maximum frequency 1.2 gigahertz, device memory is gonna be six, um, compute units 30, but that's pretty much all we know. There's no kind of, you know, raw speeds or anything like that that, you know, I guess we all wanna know so we can compare it against not just the RTX 2070, but also against sort of the previous gen of uh, 10th gen. So 1060, 1070, where's it gonna kind of fall in line with that? Now, I've actually been told a little bit more uh, from some kind of retail partners that what we're actually expected to see is RTX 2060 being announced at CES, but no reviews or the ability to actually buy it until the 19th of January. So remember, you heard that here first. Hopefully I'm right, I might even put a bet on it, maybe. But that's kind of what we've heard. Other than that, there's not really too much to say about RTX 2060, but hopefully at CES, we're gonna know a lot more about it. So now moving on to motherboards. So obviously we had the launch of Z390. As you guys know, we did a lot of reviews. We've got a lot of boards up here. Maybe some that we're actually still gonna do. But what we actually found from Gigabyte is that they're releasing the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force motherboard. So we all know that they've done the Water Force graphics cards in the past. Now we're actually looking at a motherboard. So very similar to what Asus did with their, I wanna say Maximus 10 Extreme, where it had the monoblock, kind of look a little bit like a cassette tape. Personally didn't like it, but some people did. What they've actually now done at uh, Gigabyte is very, very similar. They've strapped a monoblock onto the motherboard. And yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. The only problem is it's stupidly expensive. So just from sort of speaking to the Gigabyte representatives, we're probably in the UK gonna be looking at around six to 700 pounds 
for a Z390 motherboard. I mean, that's HEDT territory. What the hell is that all about? Yes, it looks amazing. Yes, the features, I mean, they sound amazing as well. 16 phase IR digital VRM solution, um, the cutting edge all in one monoblock for both CPU and PCH area. And for anyone who doesn't know, the reason that a monoblock is uh, quite an efficient way of cooling is if you are looking at actually water cooling your motherboard, typically you're not going to get that kind of I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of spray of air that you'd get from uh, a typical air cooler. You're not gonna get that across the VRM. So when you are trying to get sort of, you know, higher overclocks, then there's gonna be a problem. The VRMs are just gonna be sitting there getting nice and toasty. Toasty. So the problem there is that's going to affect your overclocks. It's going to kind of affect stability. So having a monoblock that goes over the whole thing is definitely the way forward. But like I say, that's going to add on cost. And we've actually been told by Gigabyte, they probably won't even bring it into the UK. Whether that happens in the US, yes, it will probably be released in the US. And yes, it's probably going to be about $700, $750 plus taxes and shipping. So yeah, if you can afford that, then I don't think you're going to be buying Z390 in all honesty. Again, no sort of keyword on launch dates or anything at the moment, but you know, something that looks really, really exciting. And I'd love to get one in for a review and actually strap it up with, you know, a full custom loop. But sadly, like I say, doesn't look like it's going to be coming to the UK. Sad panda time. So the next piece of news is going back to AMD. Now, AMD, um, actually an affiliate of AMD, has kind of teased the next upcoming Ryzen processors. So as you know, the kind of creme de la creme at the moment is the Ryzen 7 2700X without going into kind of, you know, Fredripper ter territory. But what they've actually teased is the Ryzen 7 3700X and the Ryzen 5 3600X. So basically what we're expecting to see is, you know, key replacements for uh, the Ryzen 2000 series, which obviously replaced the uh, original first gen series. But that's about all we know at the moment. There's nothing really, you know, sort of telling us anything about specs. They just literally showed uh, a really brief kind of slideshow image. And I mean, it's kind of what you expected. If they had, you know, Ryzen 5 2600X and Ryzen 7 2700X, you'd kind of guess that the key successor is going to be the 3600X and the 3700X. So sorry, guys, this one's a bit of a boring one because, well, it doesn't really tell you anything that you didn't kind of already expect. But we know that it's coming and it's probably going to be sometime in 2019. So yeah, staying ahead of the curve, AMD are doing a really, really good job when it comes to the, uh, at least the processor side. You know, as I said earlier on in the video, it'd just be nice to have, I don't know, a, a really nice new GPU to go with it. Looking at you, AMD, looking at you. So a key thing that we actually did in the last kind of week two weeks was looking at Battlefield 5. So there was various things that we actually did with Battlefield 5. The first one was a big kind of FU to Origin, which if you haven't checked that video out, definitely go and do it. It's a nice little workaround of being able to change all your hardware without Origin locking you out of your kind of game for, well, 24 hours, a security lock. But that aside, what we wanted to do was obviously show off Battlefield 5 when it came to ray tracing. So DICE had obviously gone back a little bit to the drawing board and said, look, we have performance, but it's not kind of where people were expecting, at least with ray tracing on. So what can we do? So they sort of tinkered about a little bit. And while they were doing that, Nvidia were also doing something on their side. So what Nvidia did was they kind of, you know, revamped their drivers and essentially they boosted performance with ray tracing in Battlefield 5 by huge amounts. And it's definitely something worthwhile going and checking out. Nvidia actually claimed 50% performance increases, which was ludicrous. When we saw that, it was like, it's not gonna happen. It's just, you know, no, just, no. And they were wrong. You didn't actually get 50% performance increases. We got a whopping 80%. Obviously, this is only at certain resolutions. When it came to sort of 4K on a 2080 Ti, I think we got like 7%. You know, wasn't great. But when you're talking about 1440, 1080 on some of the lower end cards, yeah, there was anywhere from sort of 30 up to 80% performance increases. So definitely, like I say, I'll link to that in the description below and it's probably appeared somewhere above my head as well. Definitely worth going and checking that out. Um, if you, and also, if you haven't played Battlefield 5 yet, go and do it. It's absolutely amazing. Not just for the aesthetics, which personally with RTX look amazing, but just as a game as a whole, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, reminiscent of the original Battlefield, which I really, really loved. Kind of lost its way a little bit, but to me personally, it seems like it's back on track. Again, let me know in the comments section, what do you think about Battlefield 5? Have you tried it yet? Are you going to try it? Let us know. So sticking with the whole kind of RTX theme, so what we actually found in the last week as well is Inno3D, who you don't really hear of that often, but when you do, it's kind of like, holy shit, like, 
wow, they always do something a little bit different. This time they've done something a little bit different, but I don't think it's for the good. So we all know that they have their kind of, you know, patented coolers uh, that are branded under iChill. Well, this time they've kind of stemmed on from that a little bit. So we have the Inno 3D iChill X3 Jekyll. I mean, firstly, I'm not really feeling the name. I'm going to be honest, the whole Jekyll and Hyde thing. Um, yeah, not really feeling that. I understand that, you know, you could have the RGB on and the RGB off. Is that the whole kind of Jekyll and Hyde? One looks like this, one looks like that. But still, it's a horrible name. So from what we can see, there are two 2080s, um, 8 gig uh, capacity, both branded as iChill. And then there's the X2 and the X3. So obviously, dual fan, triple fan. But they're both branded as Deco Jekyll. Deco Jekyll? Jekyll. Personally, I think they look absolutely ugly. Um, we've had some really nice cards coming in here, like the RTX 2080 Ti Extreme from Gigabyte. We've had, you know, some of the ASUS ones, EVGA. This just, I think they've taken it one step too far. It's really garish. It might appeal to some people. And again, let us know in the comment section what you think, because personally, I hate it. It's a big thumbs down from me. Now, going away from NVIDIA and back to AMD again, uh, as you may know, AMD have released uh, Adrenaline 2019, and they did it in 2018. Well done, someone got their number in wrong. Now, um, seriously though, uh, what they've actually done is they've released new drivers, Adrenaline 2019, and for the most part, it's probably one of the most extensive driver updates that's, well, kind of ever existed. It basically is so extensive that you're probably actually better off just going reading the release notes because yeah, there, there's a lot, but kind of in summary, what you're gonna find is that lots of games are gonna see minor improvements. So there's gonna be um, sort of anything that can really kind of not just take, um, sort of performance increases from DirectX 12, but obviously you have um, performance increases even when it comes to using other features like Vulkan and things like that. There is also other key features of the Adrenaline software like the Relive stuff, that's all been updated. It's gonna sort of potentially, as they claim, provide better results and more functionality. Um, in addition to that, AMD GPU owners will also have access to better overclocking features. So for anyone who does want to overclock and uh, you know, try and get a little bit more performance out of it doing it that way, then yeah, you should see some, some better results by maybe fine tuning things a little bit better. So this is all through the Adrenaline software. So yeah, really good stuff. I love the fact that what AMD have done is they've kind of incorporated everything into one package now. And uh, just having that just makes things so much easier when it comes to overclocking, checking on thermals, uh, screen casting, you know, recording your screen, just everything. AMD are definitely sort of on the on the right way here. Uh, I just wish Nvidia could maybe improve their drivers just that little bit. And speaking of Nvidia drivers, so Nvidia have GeForce 4 417.35 and what this is actually giving us is adding full DLSS support to Final Fantasy 15. So for anyone who has played Final Fantasy 15, obviously when it comes to anti-aliasing, there's certain ways of doing it. So you can use uh, your typical sort of anti-aliasing or now DLSS. So uh, we have done some sort of, you know, coverage on DLSS in the past. We did actually do an article about Final Fantasy 15 and DLSS. Now we're probably going to look at, you know, maybe even repeating that article and seeing if, you know, it improves things. Essentially, it's doing your anti-aliasing in real time and it really does give well some fantastic results by using actually less resources to do it so nvidia are definitely onto you know a really key thing there hopefully we start seeing more games with dlss uh, incorporated as well but not just that there are some issues that they fixed in other things so um in certain games uh hitman 2 silent assassin there's a flickering texture corruption in the game that's now been fixed uh, Battlefield 5 after being moved all the way to the left, the Ansel field of view slider stops following. So bug fixes really, but uh, when it comes to the performance side of things, Final Fantasy 15, yeah, DLSS. And last but not least, I wanna talk about EK. So we've got some really cool content coming up from EK, but what they've actually done now is they've launched the new Velocity D RGB CPU blocks. So essentially it's, well, it looks very, very similar to their Velocity uh, CPU blocks, but now it has digital RGB or addressable RGB or IRGB or however people, I wish, I wish, I wish that brands would just get together and call it the same thing. Some are calling it digital RGB, some are calling it addressable, some are calling it iRGB, some are calling it ARGB. Just stick to one thing. Stop confusing consumers. But essentially what we have is um, a CPU block called the Velocity D RGB, and it has a nice little strip around the edge, which is addressable. So, you know, it's gonna fit every motherboard out there um, as long as it has a digital RGB header. So Azus Aura Sync, Gigabyte Fusion, MSI Mystic Light, ASRock with their polychrome stuff. Uh, 
and obviously, yeah, you can also plug it into third party uh, digital RGB controllers. So XSPC have one and there's a couple of out others out there on the market. Either way, they look really, really nice and they use the same kind of base and everything as the original uh, velocity blocks, but now they have digital RGB. So there you go. That was pretty much all I wanted to do. Talk through sort of some of the latest news. And I want to know actually from you guys, do you like this type of video? If you do, then obviously I'll carry on doing them. If you don't, then, you know, we'll just scrap it and we'll pretend that this one never existed. Okay. Ne never existed. But if you did like it, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, comment below as well and let us know, you know, about all these things. Where do you kind of stand? Do you think Navi is going to be coming out sooner than we think? Are you a fan of EK Waterblocks? Do you like addressable RGB? Have you played Final Fantasy 15? Have you played Battlefield 5? So many unanswered questions. Let us know in the comment section. I'll be sure that to reply to as many as I physically can. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.